Most of my life is spent on the road touring. Every week I play shows and concerts around the towns and cities of Ireland. As a singer and performer, I'm always surrounded by people and I always have to be switched on. When I'm not performing, downtime is so important to me. I like to get out into nature and walk. There, I get space and time to slow down, to breathe and to think. This weekend, I'm spending two days walking in Northern Ireland. I'm doing two walks. The first is in South County Down in the Mourne Mountains. Tomorrow, I'm heading to the north coast of Antrim to walk an 18 kilometer stretch along the coastway to the Giant's Causeway. My name is Cleona Hagen, and this is my Tracks and Trails. I'm starting my walk here at Carrick a Little, which is at the foot of the Mourne Mountains. I'm gonna be going this direction, all the way to Silent Valley. It is quite a difficult walk, so I've got my proper hiking boots, and also I've got a spare waterproof jacket, spare trousers, my phone, but the further up the mountain you go, and the cold can actually affect your phone's battery life. So I've made sure to bring a map just in case. I've also brought some snacks and lots of water for my journey ahead. My route today starts at Carrick Little Car Park and slowly ascends through a variety of terrains at the side of Sleeve Binion. Then I climb to a high point overlooking Ben Crum Reservoir before descending for a gentle walk through Silent Valley. One of the things I love about walking in the morns is that even though you're on a map trail, you do feel like you're walking on wild trails. These routes are well populated by walkers who know these tracks, so you're never fully alone, and they're always happy to give directions. Hi hey there. Hi. Can you tell me if I'm on the right path to the Blue Lake? No, you're, you're definitely on the right path to the Blue Lake. So if you just stay on this path and you continue on into the distance, you can see the pathway making its way up the side of the mountain. Yeah. If you just make your way up there, on that plateau, you will come to the Blue Lake. What I would say is, don't, yeah. don't stop at the lake. Because if you go another 500 metres past the lake, you'll be on the shoulder between the two mountains here, and you'll have some of the most magnificent scenery you'll find anywhere on the island of Ireland there, you know, so Amazing. I wouldn't stop, i keep going. That's great, thank you so very much. You're very welcome. Take care. Enjoy your day. I will, okay, thank thanks. you. Thanks, This track starts off at a place called Carrick Little. It's only about 20 minutes drive from the seaside town of Newcastle. What I like about this trail is that even though it's near townland, it feels remote. The Mourne Mountains are a walker's paradise. They're the highest and most dramatic mountain range in Northern Ireland. There are six main peaks to the Mourns and over a dozen smaller peaks and they're all crisscrossed by networks of paths and tracks. The scenery here changes all the time, and so does the surface underfoot, between smooth and easy to rugged and rocky. All of these changes provides variety and makes for a more interesting walk, especially if you're walking on your own. The trail here is very gentle. It's easy to walk, really. It's a gradual incline that only begins to get steep after 30 minutes of walking. But when it does ascend, the views begin to reveal themselves and it's worth the wait. Wow, well, I've actually walked quite a long way and I've only been out for 30 to 40 minutes. Look at this view, phenomenal. The weather is very changeable in the mornings and it can move quickly but don't be put off by that. The start of your walk can be misty and cloudy. Then the sun can break through by the time you get to the top. I'm meeting Peter Rafferty to get the lowdown on the morns and hear some of the stories and the history that took place here. Peter is a trained mountain guide and he knows every inch of these mountains. Peter, how are you? Good, Claire. I've been so excited to meet you to get to learn some more information about this beautiful place. Yeah, lots of interesting stuff in the mornings. 
Well, during the Second World War, this area was used as a practice ground for the American, by the American Army. They used to oh. come up here and shoot their, their large guns, the howitzer guns and the bazookas. And you'll actually find lots of pieces of uh, shrapnel on the ground. And I've actually picked up a couple of them and walk oh along there. You know, them, yeah. Wow. Yeah, feel how heavy it is, yeah. Very heavy. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I'm sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's much more dense than you would imagine. It was the remains of shells fired during the Second World War. We have the famous Moan Wall. Have you ever heard of it? No, I no? haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wall that stretches for 22 miles. Over, 22 miles? Yeah, over 15 of the main peaks of the Moan Mountains. Okay. And it runs in a, in a sort of a circle right around the, the whole perimeter of the Moans. It took, uh, took 18 years to build it. 18 years? Yeah. Oh, of course I go through it. In the deepest part. It's no fun if you don't get wet when you're out on a hike. <laughs> what do you call these peaks? Well, this one in front of us here is Sleeve Binion. Right. That's quite a big long mountain, as you can see, it stretches a, a long way. And the one behind us here is Sleeve Lamigan. Oh. And then, if we could see further afield, we could see Sleeve Donard. But it's, it's the highest mountain in the Moran Mountain Range. It's the highest mountain in Northern Ireland as well. Oh my goodness, yeah, I so, never knew that. Yeah, it is indeed, yeah, yeah. Wow. Hi, okay, Kenna, this is where we part ways. Oh, well, Peter, thank you so very much for all the invaluable information that you shared with me today, and it was so lovely to meet you. Uh, thank you, I enjoyed the day, enjoyed the crack. So, <laughs> you're heading on here now to Salem Valley, yep. and I'm going to go on to see Binion, so enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Stay you, safe. look after yourself. Bye. Bye. Wow, this is just incredible. Looks like a painting. It's so, so beautiful. What a magical place, what a magical view. Wow, the view from up here is just incredible. And way over there is Silent Valley and that's where I'm gonna be finishing my walk. Silent Valley is as it sounds, peaceful and silent. This stretch of my walk is over four kilometres. It's smooth all the way and it's so still, you can nearly hear a pin drop. I'm not being weird, but I'm just, thought I would stop and listen to the sound. It's really beautiful. The sound of the water flowing is just gorgeous. As a singer and musician, sounds are important to me. And the quiet here allows the sounds in this place to stand out. All you have to do is stop and listen. I'm about to meet a man who also loves sound and, like me, loves music too. George Lydon is a luthier and makes guitars for world-famous musicians. In the last few years, he has handmade Ed Sheeran's guitars. 
I want to talk to George about how he uses walking and getting into the countryside for inspiration and to help his creative process. George, Hi, it is so wonderful to meet you. How are you? It's great you? to meet you too. Yeah, it's great, especially here. Oh, isn't it just gorgeous around here? So I was really very much into music and thought that maybe someday I would be a good guitar player, but I was I quickly found out that my guitar playing wasn't wasn't great. Oh, I'm sure it's, it's a lot better I'm sure, no, than what it's, you're saying. It's, it's not really. <laughs> so I made my first guitar when I was ten. Uh, it's the time the Beatles were starting to come out and I had this fantasy with the guitar. Obviously the both of us love music but you also love to walk. Love walking. I, I go walking a lot when I'm making guitars, designing guitars, particularly you know if, if I need to get my head clear of things I like to be in nature. Could be like here or the north coast or somewhere where there aren't a lot of people, just peace and quiet. So that's where you get all your inspiration or design in your guitars is from being out in nature. From being, and being out in nature, yeah. exactly. Yeah, go. I'm getting loads of photos there now. You go. <laughs> so, for me, being out walking, it really does relax me. Just so the air just makes me feel so good. Yes. What does it do for yourself, George? Exactly the same. It's just so good to get out in the fresh air. I don't know about you, but it wakes me up. You yeah. know, and, and somehow I feel like my whole even though I'm very relaxed, my mind is very active as well. So it's a kind of mixture of being relaxed and being very active about everything in your head. And so that helps me a lot when I'm thinking about guitar design. You know, today's been wonderful, you know, to be here in the Silent Valley. And, Likewise, you know, I've really, really enjoyed chatting with you, George. And well, likewise. it's been a pleasure to meet you. And you are a true gentleman. Oh, well, thanks very much. And look forward to seeing you again sometime. I look forward I to it. I go that way. And I'll go this way. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye.